when, who was who, and what's what. And uh, it was easy. Now let's get back to the to the focus. The, the focus was on uh, the question: How much uh, did they, or the things that were going on here, especially last yearish type? Right. Okay. During that period, uh, the other team was in, was, uh, was in, okay. And that team wanted badly. Let me explain, explain a few of these teams. When the revolution happened, in Iran in 1979. Uh, the institution, it was thousands of Iranian students, more Iranian students than any group. You know, it was thousands of students. After the revolution had happened in 1979, they didn't send more students over here. But the students that were here were well organized and they had programs and programs. And so I spoke at a few of those programs. In order, when that happened, the MSA PSG and the regular MSA, they had the MSA PSG, Muslim Student Association, Persian speaking group, and they had the MSA. At that time, it was no ISNA and all that, but it was to come later from the MSA. Since I spoke with both groups, one group, the MSA, under Saudi control, told me, we love you, you're a nice guy. But we would like for you not to, you know, hang around with those Iranians. I told him, no, I ain't going to do that. I said, if they told me not to hang around with you, I'd tell all of y'all the same thing. I became a Muslim, and I, I do what the Hadith says, down with all the Muslims. They said, okay, next time uh, Dr. So-and-so, the Egyptian doctor from way back that made all those tapes, I think of his name in a minute. That was having a program in Ames, outside of Ames, Iowa. And they invited me to come. This is 82 now. And so uh, I came to speak. And uh, it was the MSA. There's some Malaysia from all those places. And so they said uh, the same thing the other group had told me a little while earlier. I said, no, I'm not staying away from the Iranians, you know, because I was getting popular on the circuit. I was the most popular guy on both circuits, the Iranian circuit and uh, the Sunni circuit, you know. So they told me that's it. They didn't say that's it. They just said, you know, like, you see your name in lights, Musa appearing night special you know and then after that no more Musa and lights no they cut it out they had told me twice or appealed to me twice to stay away from the Iranians I told them if Iranians told me to stay away from you I tell them the same thing I'm telling you I didn't become a Muslim to become uh, you know nobody's servant but Allah's and Allah said, telling me that all of y'all is Muslim. We are all Muslims. You know, and we would tell them in those days, we don't need Arabism, Pakistaniism, Iranianism. That was from a lecture that was looked like it was 5.30, May 30th, 82, you know, at UCLA. And I just cleared the thing. I don't, look, we don't want Arabism. Like, you're going to teach us 
Islam and throw in your Arabic. We don't want that part. We just want Islam. You Pakistanis, we like you. You relate to Negroes better than anybody in those days. But we're going to listen to everything you say, but we're going to take, we read in the Hadith right along in the Quran, right along with what you say and some of the stuff you say, well, that's okay. We're not going to take it. Because it's cultural. Pakistani culture. Some of it is Arab culture. Same thing with the Iranians. We are telling them, we call it Iranianism, Arabism, and all. We don't want it. We just want Islam. So that was our position, and that's the way we are now. We was like that then. But the point is, is that as things move along and more power is exerted, those people that come into power, our friends, that was close to us in those days, as they gain more power, they have now, they have their demands that they don't, we don't. We want you to say this. We want we nice, nice guy, but we don't. You know, we ain't. And I said, no, no, no. We ain't doing that. We don't do that. You know. And that's why uh, the people that come here, the guy that they made uh, the movie about Jesus and everything. When I got to my friend's uh, place in, in Iran, he called him. He came over. He had him meet me at the door. You know, the guy that played Esau and everything. Yeah, I mean, uh, all a lot of the cast I met because he's the one that managed the movie. Okay, but he's the same one that's in charge of the, uh, because we took him all over the country they made him in charge of the Iranian media. Oh, you can call it that. He has the most popular program today in, in Iran. Okay. Lo siento mucho. I'm very sorry. I'm not going along with that stuff. I'm not going along with that stuff. Allah slipped this Islam upon us. And we have found that uh, this is all right. And that's all we're doing. And I'll give you an example on our thing. Uh, when I start getting fired up about this stuff, say with Imam Warithuddin Muhammad, I drew further away from him. But in later years, as I saw what he was dealing with, I just said, oh, he and I was different. You know, he didn't have the same history or the same punch. You know what I mean? It just, there are certain things that, uh, okay, so uh, I had said to myself in the last recent years, if I would have known what I know now, I may have never left the community. I'd have stayed there with him and said, man, uh, I couldn't have stayed around long because all the people around him was funny acting. I'm telling you, they was funny. He said it twice. I know he said it twice. He might have said it more time. He said, you think these people is with me? I'm telling you, Fahim. Uh, the Mooga Booga brothers, all of them was on the stage. You think they with me? What brother down in Texas and stuff, all of them was there. You think they with me? They with they self. This is what Imam Muhammad said. I saw he got the point. At that point, I didn't regret that I didn't stay because this is something... If I would have came on talking what I was talking from the very beginning, it couldn't have, it wouldn't have worked. But I know he had, now he's picked up on everything that he was dealing with. And that man was a good man. And, uh, 
It's not a psychoanalysis, but see, Imam Muhammad came up at a time when, okay, he had to go to University of Islam and all that. And when they would walk by uh, the Kafir school, they would say, that's a real school. And this University of Islam is, is, is our school. And he grew up in that, that generation. He grew up with that idea. That's the way people, uh, almost all the kids thought like that. That's a real school. Clara Muhammad is like, we got to go to Clara Muhammad, man. But you notice the kids, when they get out of them schools, they, they stretch out. They be gone. <laughs> no, it's just, okay, I'm just saying, this is real. This, look, if we don't be realistic, hey, we'll be get the slap, snot slapped out of us. And I don't like that, and I don't want to be one of them guys. I don't, I'm not saying I don't want to be slapped. I don't mind. Slap, busted upside the head, but not that I didn't put myself in that position to do it. Okay, so... Uh, by the time before Imam Muhammad passed away, I was really, I was vibing. I didn't tell everybody, but I was vibing with him. Because a man would all, because see, after you ride in the same boat with somebody, you I said, man, them Negroes had him surrounded. He had to get his own account where he could send money to da 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 uh, the people was deadly. You know what I mean? Uh, and they was real deadly. Anyway, uh, so you evolve, you learn a lot. Now, back to the Islamic Republic and back to the concept of, uh, of leadership. Leadership is a big deal. Time, place, and circumstance is a big deal. Historical uh, circumstance surrounding the leader and the historical stuff going on at that time, a little before and after, that all plays a part, you know, okay. For us, coming from where we came, we came from a different feel that every there's no other imam in the United States that came from the same background that I did. Not a single one. Not a single one. Number one, all the <clears throat> the stuff that went on in Oakland. The power, the authority, you know, the organizational stuff that went on in Oakland. Uh, <clears throat> nobody did that and nobody did it the way we did it you know like um, we looked at black nationalism uh, black liberation and all that is a real deal and we was looking at well what's our part we're going to play first of all uh uh, black economic uh, enterprise zones was something Martin Luther King come up with. He went to Chicago for it. He went to Chicago the same time we were doing that in Oakland. What's happening with Oakland? Oakland was the perfect size at the perfect time. You know, uh, Oakland is not a big, huge place like L.A. and, and all that. You know, Oakland is 60 square miles. It's not a big, uh, actually with Emeryville, a little piece of it is 54 square miles. But Oakland was black, had a, it was a perfect place. It had all the essence. People would come to, the gangsters would come to Oakland to get the game on Pippin and everything. You know, no, because the, the army base and all that was right there in Oakland. 
So that's where a lot of the, the Max move worked out of uh, Oakland. That's why it was so popular. That's why the movies, the Mac is all Oakland and stuff like that. All that stuff, Oakland was just the right size. <clears throat> Chicago was too big for what Dr. King wanted to do. Oakland was the right size. So we did everything that they talk about in Black National. We did that in Oakland. We just did it. And everybody know we did it. You know. But the reason we was able to do it is because uh, if I had friends that was boxers, I'd say, hey, y'all want to do boxing? Just because uh, I ran with them. We did it. We, those were friends of mine. Why don't y'all promote some of your own fights? You know, so I would front them the money and, uh, you know, but <clears throat> they were trainers at that time. They wasn't Don King. If I'd offered it to Don King, then he'd say, I got this down pat. 